NASA's Artemis 1 moon rocket has arrived at the Kennedy Space Center's launch pad less than two weeks ahead of its debut flight. They're ahead of schedule, except no one will be on board during the rocket's first mission. Instead, it will carry three mannequins into space, decked out in sensors to measure radiation, vibration, and other things that could affect our astronauts. NASA plans to launch on August 29th. The capsule will orbit the moon for a couple weeks before splashing down here on Earth. Debbie Korth is the deputy manager of NASA's Orion program. She joins me now from Houston. I am such a nerd about this stuff. I love this stuff, Debbie. Can you explain the role of the Orion spacecraft in this mission? Sure, yeah, I love it too. I'm really happy to be here to talk about um, our exciting mission coming up and our spacecraft. So um, the Orion spacecraft is the um, only spacecraft capable for deep space uh, crewed exploration. So that's going beyond low Earth orbit into the vicinity of the moon and then returning from those feeds from uh, the lunar vicinity. So it's designed to carry four crew members for two days, uh, I'm sorry, four crew members for 21 days and, <laughs> um, uh, and keep them safe and healthy during that harsh environment. So that's, you know, as we said, you're going to be sending up mannequins and that type of thing to, to be looking at all that. What assurances does NASA need from this crewless launch? Yeah, there's a whole bunch of objectives that we're doing on Artemis 1. So, so you've mentioned the mannequins. We're looking at the radiation environment inside the vehicle. Uh, there will be a lot of accelerometers and load measurements on what kind of loads the vehicle is seeing throughout the flight. Uh, one of our primary mission objectives is actually testing out the heat shield upon re-entry. So uh, the heat shield, as the vehicle's coming in, it's about 25,000 miles per hour. It gets up to 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So definitely a unique heat shield uh, designed to protect the vehicle and the occupants. Um, and then checking out all of the systems. It's a 43-day mission, which is a, a significantly long mission for us, looking at our communications, our guidance and navigation, our propulsion systems. Well, some of those will be flying for the first time. So really ringing out all those systems over those uh, those 43 days to make sure that we are completely ready for that cruise flight on Artemis 2. But you got to make sure everything is just right. So if this launch is successful, you know, what's next here? When do we get astronauts up in there? When do, when do we get back to the moon? So, so next flight will be Artemis 2. That'll be our first crewed flight, and that's a 10-day mission planned um, into 2024. And um, so we're making some modifications between Artemis 1 and 2. We'll be adding more of those flight crew equipment systems that the, the crew will need, things like a bathroom and a galley, some exercise equipment, and all of our life support systems. So that'll be our first crewed flight. That'll just be a lunar flyby. And then the first uh, human mission to the moon, uh, we'll take the first woman and the first person of color to the surface of the moon is Artemis 3 in 25, 26 timeframe. Oh, that's going to be so cool. You know, when you look at it, though, humans were last on the moon back in 1972. You think about the timeline of that. What do we hope to learn from now another moon mission so many years later? Yeah, I think uh, several things. You know, we're looking to to uh, preserve or, or obtain a, a permanent presence in the vicinity of the moon. So this isn't going to be missions coming and going. The long-term plan is a gateway orbiting platform around the moon where you have the Orion dock there. Crew members um, can, can go on the gateway, get on landers, go to the surface of the moon. So where Gateway is in orbit, it actually provides a lot more um, access to all uh, areas of the moon, ultimately to learn how to live and work there so we can uh, get to our ultimate goal, which is to send humans to Mars. Yeah, a lot of us sometimes want to leave and go to Mars. So <laughs> fascinating work, <laughs> uh, right? You just want to run away sometimes. Debbie Corr, thank you so much. We can't wait to see how all of this turns out and good luck. Thank you very much.